This January, Georgia will see not one, but two Senate runoff races. The outcome of these elections will determine which party controls the Senate and very likely what can get done during a Biden-Harris administration. While much of the focus is on the state of Georgia, turning out white and, of course, black voters, there are two voting blocks that often go completely overlooked, Latinos and Asian Americans. Here to discuss who might actually hold the keys to Georgia's special elections are Democratic strategist Chuck Roca, president of Solidarity Strategies and Nuestro PAC, and Aisha Mahmood, executive director of the Asian American Advocacy Fund. Thank you all so much for talking to me this evening. Uh, look, I, I want to start with Aisha. How do you explain the Democrats' success in Georgia this year, especially when it comes to Asian American voters? I, I will say it's it's our API communities. It's our Asian American Pacific Islander communities right here in Georgia, along with our multicultural, multilingual, multigenerational coalition that we've built among with other black and brown voters in this state. We would not have been able to achieve the wins that we did at the local, state, or national level if it wasn't for our communities in Georgia. Chuck, what impact did Latino voters have in Georgia this year? Uh, was it because there were large numbers of new Latino voters? Was it activating Latino voters who were already there? How did they play a role this year? Well, there's been a lot of organizing on the ground, and me and you both are numbers guys, so let's just talk about the numbers. There's about a million Latinos in Georgia, but only about half of them are old enough to register to vote, and part of them are registered as Republicans. You'll be, everybody be interested to know that about 185,000 Latinos showed up to vote in the November election, so the key is getting them back. Over the last 10 years, you've seen the Latino growth in Georgia be grow at 96%, while you saw AAPI growth grow at 131%. Now, there's about a half a million AAPI voters. These voters, the Asian Americans, the Latino voters, folks, as you say, focus on the black and white voters, and they should. But I think these two new demographics, which are the fastest growing demographics in the state, which have been self-organizing on the ground now for years, now is all coming to fruition. And I think that's why you're going to see them have such a big impact on this runoff. Aisha, oftentimes when we talk about messaging in campaigns, we talk about having a targeted message. What are the kinds of messages that get out the Asian American and the AAPI community in Georgia? Uh, is it just jobs? Is it issues like immigration? Is it housing? What are the kinds of things that candidates need to say to bring out that community for a runoff election where usually people stop paying attention? It's not just those issues. It's not just jobs or the economy, but it's a lot of the same issues that impact our other communities of color. It's health care and education and making sure our kids can go back to school safely. Um, of course, immigration is at top of mind for a lot of our communities, especially increasing access to family based immigration, uh, providing pathways to citizenship for our undocumented people. But here in Georgia, we focus so much on issues that relate to our communities, especially at the local level. And this year, I think a lot of folks are forgetting that we also have a race for Public Service Commission on the ballot on January 5th. So we'll be talking to voters about what happens on their utility bills and making sure that uh, folks that are receiving, um, folks are receiving a fair deal when it comes to their power bill. So I think we're not just gonna be talking about what's happening at the national level, because I think frankly, folks are a little bit tired of hearing about it, but we get to focus on those issues that impact people's wallets and impact their families right here in Georgia. So, Chuck, Georgia currently has a governor, Brian Kemp, who during when he was running for office in 2018 did ads where he said he was riding around in trucks to round up uh, illegal immigrants and, and, and bragged about how aggressive he would be about these kinds of issues. What are some of the best messages to reach Latino voters in the state of Georgia and not just in Atlanta, but in South Georgia and the central part of the state as well? Well, if this election taught us anything, it'll teach you that Latinos ain't the same even from county to county. Latinos who live in downtown Atlanta act a lot different and sound a lot like me who live down around the Delta and South. There's a lot of Latinos there and they may all have different shades of brown skin, but they care about a couple things. Their family first and foremost. This COVID has hit our community harder than almost any other community. And then there's an undertow of anxiety about exactly what you're talking about, Jason, which is what we've lived through. And it was that Trump hatred that drove this turnout at historic levels for November. So what we're hoping is we can get that energy back to say this is our time to let our voice be heard. And I think that's exactly why you're going to see these two demographics have a big, big impact. Aisha, you know, I'm curious about this because a lot of people nationally know about Stacey Abrams. They know about Fair Fight. They know about Fair Vote. 
Has she been helpful uh, to organizations that, that, that like yours? Has she reached out? Has she shared money? Do you guys sit and sort of powwow together about strategy? Or do you sort of operate in separate circles? We definitely have all the support in the world from Stacey Abrams and her entire coalition of supporters. Um, I will say when I started uh, doing advocacy at the state capitol, Stacey was one of my greatest allies and really helped me make sure that I was representing the needs of my community in the best way possible. So throughout this entire process, um, we've been getting support from her organizations as well as from her. We just got a call from her the other night uh, congratulating us for the success that we saw in this past election cycle and making sure that we knew that we had commitment from her to continue uplifting our organization and our communities. And I think that's the valuable thing about someone like Stacey Abrams. It's not just about her, it's about her investing in the communities and that includes black and brown communities and that includes Asian Americans. I tell every single state Democratic director, find you somebody who loves your state the way Stacey Abrams loves Georgia. Uh, Chuck Roca yeah. and Aisha Mahmood, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you.